Welcome to module four. You have now completed two thirds of this training. Well done. So far, we've talked about fire hazards, fire prevention and safety, and reporting. In this module, we cover a most important topic, how to respond to emergencies. We will look closely at the following questions. One, early detection and response. Two, emergency procedures and protocols. Three, communication and coordination with emergency response teams. And four, crowd management and evacuation assistance. When a fire breaks out, people panic. And fear, as we know, breeds chaos. As a fire watch guard, you are the first line of defense and people will turn to you for directions, reassurance, and safety in an emergency. Now you may have heard of the 2003 Station Nightclub fire in Rhode Island. In one night, 100 people lost their lives and 200 more were severely injured. Here's what happened. A rock band fired up pyrotechnics during a stage performance and sparks landed on the highly flammable soundproofing foam of the walls and the ceiling. A fire immediately broke out and it spread quickly. To make matters worse, the nightclub was overcrowded and there were no emergency exits. In fact, the only exit was the entrance to the club located at the end of a long, narrow hallway. Imagine the fear and panic that people felt as they crammed into the hallways, desperate to reach the exit. After the tragedy, investigators discovered that the owners of the nightclub did not have the proper permits for pyrotechnics and violated every fire prevention and safety code. On top of that, there was no emergency plan in place or security personnel on site. Since then, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, put in place strict fire codes and regulations. One of the safety measures is to have a fire watch on site where there are risks of fire. Fire watch guards could have detected the fire at the nightclub before it spread and immediately alerted patrons, the staff, and emergency services. They could have also managed crowds and guided people to the exit while emergency responders were on their way. When a life-threatening emergency occurs, you must have the knowledge to respond appropriately and efficiently so you can help protect lives and properties. Number one, early detection and response. As we've seen earlier, each site has its own specific list of fire hazards. It could include hot work, pyrotechnics, open flames, hazardous chemicals, flammable materials, and more. For each location, you will receive specific instructions verbally and in writing, and you must review all instructions carefully before the beginning of your shift. Instructions include a fire prevention plan and an emergency action plan. Instructions also include maps of exit routes in case of evacuation and a contact sheet with all emergency numbers. Make sure that you follow all emergency protocols outlined by ACS and its client. Now, if a fire does break out, depending on the severity and the urgency of the situation, you will either contact the fire department or 911. And once you've contacted the appropriate emergency responder, then you'll also need to notify the property owner or building manager and dispatch. Let's look at different types of emergencies. A. When should you contact the fire department? Well, if you detect signs of an actual fire, such as smoke, flames, or unusual odors, you should immediately contact the fire department. Trained firefighters will quickly get on the scene and, in most cases, prevent the fire from spreading. If the fire alarm system is activated, you should also contact the fire department even if you don't see any signs of fire. Firefighters will investigate the issue and then ensure that all occupants are safe. If there is an emergency, you must immediately initiate the emergency response for the location you were watching. Some locations may include sounding alarms, contacting the fire department, and notifying occupants. B. When should you contact 911? If there are injuries or medical emergencies unrelated to fire, such as someone experiencing a heart attack or a severe injury, call 911. Emergency medical services will dispatch ambulances and medical personnel to provide immediate assistance. 
If there is a non-fire emergency, such as a gas leak, chemical spill, or structural collapse, you should also contact 911. A specialized response team will be sent in to investigate. No matter the circumstances, remember to stay calm, assess the situation, and determine the appropriate course of action based on the emergency. Never forget to keep yourself safe in all emergency situations. Two, emergency procedures and protocols. As a fire watch guard, you will need to follow all emergency procedures and protocols outlined in the client's emergency action plan. This written document is required by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The emergency action plan will outline the actions individuals must take to ensure everyone's safety in emergencies, the floor plans or site map showing emergency escape routes, the names or job titles of persons who can be contacted, and the types of emergencies that could occur at the location such as fires, explosions, toxic chemical, or radioactive releases. Now, depending on the location, the emergency action plan may also include a description of the different alarm systems that notify employees to evacuate or take other actions, the site of an alternative communication center to be used in the event of a fire or explosion, and shutdown procedures. Your first responsibility in an emergency is to quickly evaluate the situation and immediately contact the right emergency responder with your location and a clear description of the situation. Other protocols and procedures may include activating the fire alarm and initiating the evacuation process. You'll be notified by dispatch if that is part of your responsibility for that site assisting with the orderly evacuation of occupants by directing them to evacuation routes, using the nearest staircase for evacuation. Elevators are never safe during a fire. Assembling everyone once outside and making sure that people are accounted for. And guiding people with limited mobility to the designated safe area and ensuring that they are assisted by someone. Emergency protocols are designed to protect people and properties, so be sure to follow them precisely. Three, communication and coordination with emergency response teams. Think back on the 2003 Station Nightclub fire. A fire watch guard on site would have called emergency responders at the first sign of smoke or fire. He or she would have then coordinated with emergency responders, venue staff, and patrons. This would have facilitated the evacuation process while firefighters were on their way. In an emergency, it is your responsibility to call and report what is happening on the ground, request assistance, and communicate with supervisors and building management. Use your smartphone to call the appropriate emergency responders. Make sure that your phone is fully charged at all times. If cell phone reception is limited, you may be using a landline on site or two way radios to communicate with other fire watch guards, emergency responders, or the building manager. In all emergencies, your ability to communicate clearly is key. Remember, stay calm, quickly provide critical information to emergency responders and all other parties that you have been instructed to notify. In the case of a fire, Critical information would include the location of the fire, the status of the fire, any hazards that could aggravate the situation, and the status of occupants. If necessary, you would also give clear instructions to occupants about evacuation routes or gathering at designated assembly points. Imagine you are patrolling a large commercial building late at night. Suddenly, you notice smoke and flames coming from a storage room on the second floor. The fire alarm system activates, alerting occupants to evacuate the building. What should you do? Immediately contact emergency services using either your smartphone or a two-way radio system. Here's what you need to communicate. A, the exact location of the fire within the building. For example, this is Jim Smith reporting a fire at 234 Lincoln Avenue, second floor storage room near the northeast corner. B, the size and severity of the fire. So you might say something like, 
The fire is spreading fast and it looks like the storage room is in flames. Smoke is also spreading to nearby areas. C, the presence of hazards. Alert emergency responders of any hazards that could impact their response or the safety of occupants. For instance, you might report there are flammable materials stored near the fire and gas cylinders on the same floor. D, the status of occupants. If you have information about any individuals who may be trapped or in need of assistance, inform emergency responders right away. You could say something like, occupants are evacuating the building, but there could still be people trapped on upper floors. E, the access points. Provide information about the best access points for firefighters. For example, you could say something like, the main entrance for 234 Lincoln Avenue is accessible and there's also a secondary entrance on the west side of the building near the loading dock. Your ability to communicate clearly and coordinate with emergency responders protects lives and properties. Once you have communicated the information verbally and the situations under control, Remember to document the emergency and your observations in writing. Those incident reports can be used for analysis, investigations, and legal purposes. Four, crowd management and evacuation assistance. After the 2003 nightclub fire, the State Fire Marshal's Office of Rhode Island initiated the Have an Exit Strategy campaign. And on that night, there were no firewatch personnel on site. No clearly marked exit routes and patrons trampled each other as they tried to get out. Remember that you are the first line of defense during an emergency. People will look to you for guidance and for helping them to get to safety. You will need to keep things orderly and make sure that everyone knows what to do and where to go until emergency responders arrive. Some emergencies, man-made or natural, require immediate evacuation. Man-made emergencies include fires, explosions, toxic material releases, radiological and biological accidents, and civil disturbances. People may also need to evacuate during natural emergencies, such as earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. What are your essential duties during an emergency evacuation? Well, let's break them down. When you discover a fire or you receive notification of an emergency evacuation, you must immediately alert people to evacuate the building. And depending on the instructions for your fire watch, you can do this by activating the fire alarm, making an announcement over a public address, or personally informing people in the area. You must then guide people to designated evacuation routes that lead to safe assembly areas. Remember, that this is your responsibility to regularly check the evacuation routes on the site map, make sure that they are accessible and clear before a fire erupts. You do not want to find out that an exit route is blocked during an evacuation. Most buildings include maps and floor diagrams with arrows that show exit routes. These maps include locations of exits, assembly points, and equipment such as fire extinguishers, first aid kits and spill kits that may be needed in an emergency. So review all written information carefully and check routes during your patrol. While guiding people to evacuation routes, make sure that you assist people with disabilities. You may need to help them navigate stairs, provide physical support, or direct them to designated evacuation assistance areas. And once people are assembled in the safe area, keep track of who has exited the building. Conduct a head count at the assembly area. If anyone on the checklist is missing, immediately inform the emergency responders upon their arrival. It is not your job to search for or rescue people who are not on the list. Last but not least, you may be asked to implement the shelter in place procedures. For example, if there's a chemical release and evacuating is not safe or possible, you may have to direct people to designated indoor rooms to protect against toxic fumes and spills. Throughout the evacuation process, you will need to provide clear instructions to everyone and help maintain calm and order. 
coordinate with emergency responders, and let people know when it is safe to re-enter the building or if they need to remain at the assembly area. You have now completed module four, congratulations. There's a lot of important information in this module, but did you take notes? Let's see if you can answer a few of the following questions. What is the first thing you should do if a fire erupts? What information should you communicate with emergency responders? Where would you find maps and floor plans that show exit routes? What could be your responsibility during an evacuation? If you don't know the answers, just review module four so you're prepared to take the final quiz and get your fire watch certificate.